my first degree is law, uh, and then my master's was on gender and peace building. Then my PhD was on peace and security studies. So these are the formal education that I did. But I have also lots of certificates. For instance, from Brown University, I was a visiting professor. So I did a certificate on human trial response, uh, conflict prevention, and uh, risk management. And also from Columbia University, that was conducted in Budapest, Hungary. I did peace education certificates and democracy and human rights. And uh, just uh, last month, I did PV, Prevention of Violent Extremism. So these are some of the certificates that I did. And I also had some diploma from uh, Susan Land, uh, University of Freiburg on federalism, uh, decentralization, and conflict resolution. So these are the things that I did in terms of education. I took a psychology class, and I thought, wow, this is something that um, is pretty much everything, how people make decisions or how people think or how people use language, all these fascinating areas related to people. One of my professors suggested industrial organizational psychology, and it's an area that applies psychology to the workplace. And he suggested I look at some graduate schools, you know, apply to some programs, and the more I found out about it, the more I liked, because you could be an industrial organizational psychologist in a company, working for one particular organization, helping to them to to make decisions about the workplace, or you could be a consultant, um, or you could be a, a professor, be an academic, and do more research sorts of things. But I went to graduate school um, and realized uh, that I really did like the, the, the teaching and the research, but I could do, have the option of doing both. So I got my master's in IO psychology, then went on to get my PhD. I graduated uh, with my first degree in biology. I was um, employed as a graduate assistant in the Department of Biology. And then the second year, it so happened that the university opened the first graduate program in the, in the, in the country. So I joined the, the graduate program and I got my second degree uh, in biology. And then uh, I was looking for what, what's next for me. It's always in me, what, what's next for me? And doing a PhD as an academician is, uh, it will make me, of course, fit to teach at higher level. So I was looking for a third degree, and there was no PhD program in Ethiopia. So I wrote again to three universities or four universities, and finally I got acceptance by University of Heidelberg, Germany. I have to learn the language for six months, so I did a six-month German course. I have to pass the exam, oral and written exam, and then I finished my PhD. I came back, and then I got all the different prom academic promotions. I was appointed to be the director of uh, the research institutes. I love psychology, so I became an elementary school major and a psychology major. And, um, and I went ahead and got my first teaching job, and I loved it. But I also knew I wasn't going to do it for 36 years, because you do retire at 65. I went back to school and got a master's degree. And that's when I met this mentor. And I followed her mentorship, which was really wonderful. And she explained the process of why you would want to get a formal education with a PhD or a doctorate degree. That gave me the opportunity to teach college students after I finished. And the second class I had with college students, I realized that that was my calling and that I could do that for the next 37 years. 